And I know Eve was talking about common, so. Okay. So we don't actually have a quorum yet. So I don't know, Jason, if you want to just like put it on, um, do not record yet. <laughs> I mean, stop, um, pause recording temporarily yes, until we have a recording right now. Okay, go ahead, Kim. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, law, this meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. So um, this meeting is officially a, uh, uh, started order. and um, we should start with the um, this is meeting is called to order and um, I don't think there are any public to comment. Unless so, Eve wants to comment, but but I know we, we only have this short meeting. So sorry, um, Eve. <laughs> oh, you made it you made a ton of my no, camera. Sorry. <laughs> um so it looks okay. like the the um the main objective of this meeting is to review and discuss the tech priorities projects, which I believe are going to be um, displayed or prioritized by Jason in lieu of Guilford. Well, so we have our list and then Guilford has his list. So I don't okay. think Jason's going to necessarily share Guilford's list. Um, I did notice one, one thing that happened, um, and Andy um, may be able to speak to this, but in the preliminary, oh, I guess they're not approved yet, but in the preliminary goals with the town manager, it said that one of the things would be that like the list of sidewalk and road projects, you know, on the town's priority list would be published every year. And now those goals, they're not finalized yet. But but I did see that language in there. So that would be that would in mean that town council's thing. An official an official town list would be published every year about the priorities. Um, and I sent around the document that we have, I mean, but as, and I, but I did note, right, as an advisory committee, I'm not sure what it means that we say, like, these are our priorities, because we don't actually have any authority to say, the town must do these following things, we're just advising them. Um, so, but what, one thing I was wondering is just because we do have four members here, and we wanted to you know, keep this short and sweet, if we each, if people have had a chance to review it, and maybe just want to you know, if we go around the virtual room and just want to take a few minutes each to comment, you know, about what we think about, are these the same priorities that you would still say are our priorities now, or if there's things you want to change or add, is that a sorry, good way Eve, to I, proceed? Eve, what, sorry, I did not see, you sent us a list, is that what happened? I'm sorry, I did not see that. Is that late? Yeah, there was an agenda and then there was a notes from TAC spring 2022. Yeah, that was my list. Document yeah. that was the list. Oh, yeah, it wasn't yeah I didn't, I, didn't, list, exactly. I didn't go all the way down. Sorry, now uh, I see that. Yes. And then well, also have, Andy has his hand up. Yes, yeah. Andy. Yeah, I just wanted to respond quickly on the two things about the council meeting that we just had and the one that's coming up next week. One is, uh, as you noted, the uh, manager goals are on the agenda they have been revised uh, it is in the packet i believe that the goal that you read is uh, still within the the list the interest of the council the counselors who brought that forward and it hasn't been discussed yet is um that uh there's a tremendous number of inquiries made all of the time from constituents about my road needs ter needs work terribly. We need to do something on it. When is something going to be done? And counselors are frustrated because they don't have any way to answer the question. Um, I assume that it might be a topic of discussion at the meeting next Monday. And if you have any comments about it, either regarding um, desirability to do it or concerns about the feasibility of uh, having such a list, um, the, it, this is the time to get them in either by having somebody present at public comment 
or submitting a written comment on behalf of the committee. So that was one thing that I wanted to just comment on. The other thing is that uh, at the end of the meeting, counselors have the opportunity to uh, give committee and liaison reports. And I gave a liaison report about um, this, your committee at the meeting last Monday. And specifically, I reported on um, the conversation that we had placed a prior meeting um, in which you were talking about feeling the need to have better clarity about how your expertise can be best used as a committee and the need to address that issue. Um, I simply reported that as a, um, when I had the opportunity uh, during that section of the council meeting, um, but those reports are not discussed, but it was a way of getting your report as you asked me to do across to the council. So that was all, thank you. Well, thank you for conveying that to the council. I mean, so right when the new council, when the, the current council took office in January 2022, like I know, right, we had prepared like a sort of summary about this is TAC and these are what we've done and things. And, you know, the goal originally was that we were going to present it to TSO just to help people become more familiar with what TAC is and what we do. And also, and I had also um, sent it to the council president to just share with the council. And it ended up going really nowhere, I think, because um, there's also been discussions about updating the tax charge or if the TAC is going to become a commission or like all these different things. And so, I mean, I feel like some members of the council might not still know that much about TAC. So, um, but we appreciate that's great that you. Um, did the liaison report Thank just you. to update on that. So um, Thank you. Thanks. So well how do you how do how do everybody think that we should just proceed in kind of discussing about our goals? Do we want to I mean I can pull them up on my screen and we can go over them together. Or do people want to yeah, weigh what in happened, with individual comments? I just what happened to that uh, spreadsheet we have? Well, that's not our spreadsheet. It's like Guilford's spreadsheet. Yeah, so, but it included uh, there was a TAC like there was tab a TAC tab. tab. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It was our that was our um, priorities at the time that we did it a couple of years ago. Sure, reflected just what exactly what we had thought about. Well, and Guilford also to keep, some of those. Yeah, and Guilford also keeps the list of like every. I mean, I think right, that's, yeah, that's a separate about list, yeah. everybody who's requested any um, right. improvements. I don't know, yeah, Jason, sure. is, do you see a list like that ever at DPW? But No, he hasn't shared that one. Oh. It's a mystery list. Because the question, right, was like, how are, I mean, I've wondered myself, like how those are tracked or, and right, they're not all created equal, of course, but um, but they come in through so many different venues, right? They can come in like by people can contact their counselors or people can contact the town manager or people can contact DPW or put it in C click fix. And, you know, is there sort of a comprehensive place where somebody's tracking like that these were received and what's going to happen to them? So it always also seemed, Tracy, as though uh, there were always some requests that didn't get on Guilford's list. Like there were certain places he would get the request from that counted as went on his official list, but other places where people sent in requests didn't get on his list. So it didn't seem like it was always completely comprehensive. Right. So I guess when Guilford's back, you know, at the next meeting, we could also ask about that. But, um, but just, why don't I, does it make sense for me to pull it? I, I just pulled it up on my screen. Yeah. Does, would it make yes. sense? For, oh, so let me just share that then. So, um, okay, so you can see this. So this was a list that I had worked on. Um, so we had met right before the new council came and we created like a, a couple page summary of just like this is TAC and this is what we did. And then this was um, a follow-up list that I created when I had a meeting with the town manager just to indicate um, like what were our priorities. And um, so 
based on our early discussions. So the main priority I had, and I still feel like this is a big priority, um, is the completion of the priority bike and pedestrian networks map. Um, right, we had our discussion where we did all the markups in early 2021, and it's now almost two years later. And we really need to get that done um, at planning board meetings. It's come up about like what, you know, where is the bike and ped network? And and I know I was at the District 5 meeting that was held last weekend and people were asking, well, you know, there's going to be development at Hickory Ridge, for example, is like that part of the network and things, right? So the longer we wait to have that map, you know, in, in an updated form in GIS and presented, like the more outdated it's going to get. Um, so I'd still like to see if we can move that along. And then there were these two other items too. You know, these were more mine. Well, this first one, the crosswalk, the design guidelines, right? We had gone through those as a tack and um, sent our final guidelines to the town manager. So they were never officially adopted by the council, which I think would be helpful. But at the same yeah. time, the DPW is already using those when they do those crosswalk improvement projects. And they were used for the a lot of the downtown improvements. So they're already happening. Um, and then there's this other one that hasn't gone anywhere either, which is the restriction on on-street parking on Ontario roadways, right? So um, the DPW originally brought that to TAC in 2019. I remember talking about it at the police station meeting room. Uh -huh. And the, the concerns were just about, particularly like with the winter and things, like if people are parking on these arterial roads, you know, it can create some challenges. And um, at the time we supported doing that um so those these two items both went to the town manager and they just haven't been advanced so as i said in practice the, the crosswalk design guidelines are already being used i mean i don't know it was suggested guilford suggested to me that i could go back to the town manager and ask about that again um but i don't know what do you people should. think about that yeah. but i really i mean i really care the most about the gis map i think but Yes, but we also, there was a huge concerted effort about this yeah. crosswalk design thing. And right. you know, the, the fact that the, the council is de facto using it is something that at least we could put, they're already using it. So we should, yeah. we should just be. Well, and I, could, and I could also ask Amber, like I was on the TAC website recently, like she still has like the older drafts and stuff. I could just say like, Amber, can you just put these up? <laughs> yeah. Can you put these up on the website, you know, to show that they're being used? So one thing to throw in about the crosswalk design guideline. Okay. Um, planning just got a grant to come up with some new downtown design guidelines like for hardscape and traffic scape and uh, benches yeah. and you know that all that sort of stuff. I think they got, I think it was 75,000. So it's definitely something to keep highlighted. They, they know, they like what we've done so far, as far as I understand it, um, with, the, with the imprinted thermoplast uh, crosswalks. Yeah. So we definitely wanna keep that on the forefront and make sure it doesn't get overlooked or changed or whatever or if it does get changed that you guys like it too i think yeah so we definitely we love the fact that we're, we've moved away from the granite brick and concrete crosswalks that aren't designed for anywhere with freezing temperatures sure right. eve has a question oh go ahead um i just wanted to say that um I'd love you guys to um, remind yourselves about the document the TAC prepared about two or three years ago about overall um, TAC recommendations for annual administration and budget in the town. Um, and I can uh, resend that link. Yeah, thank you. Eve. Can you do that? That would be excellent. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I can put it. There's no way. I don't see it. No, chat there's no button. chat. Yeah, that's, right. that's the annoying thing about this stuff. So, but if you could email think, it to us, that'd be great. Yeah, Thank you. Um, Christine, uh, yeah. you'll just have to forward it to Christine because I don't have. Yeah, My, I mean, so for me, it's nice to have a map. That's great, but the things that actually stop people getting killed right now are the crosswalk design guidelines and things like that. Right? I mean, that's. We need that hard coded 
into the town processes before any of what Jason's just been talking about happens, right? That that's going to you know really save lives, keep people moving, that sort of stuff. I think that's should be like I mean that's an easy should be an easy win for us. We already everybody's using it. It's mm -hmm. it's it's sort of like a no you know no brainer, right? I mean even Amherst College is considering going to those thermoform crosswalks. I mean, we need to get that out there. We need to get that in print. And like, this is the way the town is moving. Let's go forward. Because I mean, just, just, yeah, just looking at Kendrick Park, the stuff that has a thermoform is obvious. The stuff that doesn't, everyone just blows right on through. So we don't really need much more than that, just to prove where that sort of priority should lie. So that's a good yeah. point, Marcus. Thank you. I mean, I think one thing, the reason that I've been thinking about the map is just because it's coming up, as I said, at planning board meetings and other meetings in terms of like- Oh, for sure, yeah, I'm not- I'm looking not at future just... development and, you know, yeah. for example, like it came up with the um, questions about Olympia Drive, like the new development there and the developer wasn't interested in providing parking and said, well, everybody can bike and walk and take the bus yeah. and- um, and they can also use, you know, his argument too, is that they can also use UMass parking and then the planning mm -hmm. board members are like, well, how does this fit into the bike ped network? Are you going to do things to encourage bike walking and biking yeah. there? Yeah, my, my point is yeah, we yeah, have, yeah. No, we have course, notes right. around that, right? We have notes. No, we absolutely. Have yeah. drafts. The fact is right. we don't have a standard for the town. No. We don't have a standard for the town for crosswalks. Right. Do that. <laughs> Then everything else we can get into, you know. I think I think let's get the easy wins in there because getting that GIS thing. I mean, we've been trying what I mean for. No, I know. A million Almost years. You know, just trying to get find somebody, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it shouldn't be hard either, but it's it. That's more of a money <laughs> thing. Um, well, right, get, and even before someone. that too, I think I remember Eve trying to get the initial layer from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. That took a few years first. Right. <laughs> so um, right, yeah. no, but I mean that's yeah. more money dependent rather than just setting out, you know, having the councillors vote and say yes, we're doing this. Right, you know? right. That's the easy one. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and then all right. So then, and I also just had I just had on my list. I mean, it's not really a priority at this point. There is no funding, but just that we had done that those walking assessments of North Pleasant Street near the UMass campus. You know, between Eastman Lane where the roundabout is and Pine Street, and just to keep that on the radar. Um, yeah. So the, the previous the the previous TSO had made it a priority, but the reality, right, is that there's no funding for it, and I don't see it as being near the top of some of these lists. Yeah, you know, in to terms me, of the to me, list, yeah. so to me that like specific call out though is all part of the note below it, right? Where we talk about you know North Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you've got here right next to Pet Kendrick Park. I just see it, you know, as that Easterman Lane. To, I don't know there's necessarily a need to specifically call it out because you know we prioritize that you need to sort out, yeah these specific streets okay great when they get to north pleasant between eastman and pine mm -hmm. well, there's all this stuff it's the same as for sure i mean i would say that pedestrian access to groff park's actually been done right i mean it is it is a, getting a, much farther path. along yeah i mean maybe yeah. jason since we have jason here and he's on top of all these products he could tell us a little bit more too about um yeah. Um, so, so like for example, North Pleasant Street next to Kendrick Park. That um, is I think, funded. That huh? should be on our. Oh, great. Paving list next year. Um, I, that one, I think all the design is approved. We're only going from McClellan to uh, Triangle Triangle Street slash North Pleasant Street. Uh, yep. Yeah, Triangle Street. I guess. Yeah. That one's complicated. I always call it Old North Pleasant Street just to kind of distinguish sure. it. Sure. It is but, confusing um, to people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that yeah. one is funded. That one's going forward. The design's approved. We're that one's going in our next paving, uh, uh, our next paving bid. And right. then North North Pleasant Street from Eastman to Pine has come up more than usual in this past year, which is good. You know, it's 
it's sort of been fallow for a few years mm -hmm. but um it got some it got brought up in a uh, cdbg funding meeting which is a good sign i don't mm -hmm. think it got any like high honors there but it did get mentioned so that's you know a sign that it's a, a project that's on a list any anyways and then we've had a couple of minor developments that is prompting us to kind of we're actually going to do maybe a 100 foot section of this from uh from like pine street to the first shared driveway because okay there's there's a spur of north pleasant street up near pine mm -hmm. street yeah you guys familiar? it's got like three driveways off of it yeah yeah and it's a spur that's technically town right of way and it's oh cool. that part yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when all we walked that i had never really seen that before yeah. until we walked it but yeah it's all like the old it's an old north pleasant bit where they probably mm -hmm. have yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it used to have like a common area or something right, to that right. effect. So yep, yep, we're, yep. we're actually going to include that in our paving list to just turn those three three driveways into three longer driveways okay. eliminate the portion of the old road and install a portion of the proposed multi-use path oh least. nice nice so it's it's silly it's just a couple hundred feet but at least it's one little piece and uh, anything's and take, better than nothing yeah for sure and, and it takes care of a problem for us because it's a headache to try and patch that to plow mm -hmm, that little area mm -hmm. to uh, we get complaints about the potholes over there and and all sorts of tiny little issues that you know amount to a million cuts and so we're we're looking to take care of that piece and then i also had um some interest from there's a it's not a frat house there's a rental property north of campus that is looking to develop an empty lot north of their existing rental unit and they wanted to negotiate for some stormwater drainage stuff so i met with them and said that's where we really we had designed a bus pull off in that location um with this multi-use path and it would have required it will require easements or you know takings or easements from that property and the two owners were great they met with me they were like yeah let's make this work we're going to move their existing driveway over to um oh is it berkshire terrace i think it's berkshire terrace mm -hmm. i always screw yeah. up oh, that one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i always I screw right. up all the strutters farm road yeah. names yeah um, but we're going to move the driveway over to the side street and then put the bus bus pull off and shelter and sidewalk right in front of their property and they were yeah. they were great with it they were like yeah we'll figure out if you we want to do an easement or a taking or whatever and then we'll go from there so that's nice. two tiny pieces of a much bigger project that that yeah. have gotten you know there's been some interest there's been some forward motion at least so back to um but back to the north pleasant street at kendrick right yeah. so with the pro the work plan for next year, does that include um, having the crosswalk, like the raised crosswalk at McClellan? McClellan, yes. And then and then you know expanding, right? Doing the angled parking and back in angled moving parking, to the west, right? Bike to lane. the oh counter. Okay, great. Yep. Um, That's great. Which, which side of um is it both sides of McClellan that will get a crosswalk? Because currently there are sidewalks on both sides yes yes Great. the whole it'll be it'll basically be a raised intersection oh cool the whole thing the and whole now, intersection with crosswalks on all three sides okay and there was also originally a design about having another crosswalk north of mcclellan is that still in the plans too that's included as additional yeah. traffic calming great yeah that's okay. not raised i I might be wrong. I, I yeah, don't no, think I think, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think it was raised in the plans. We had talked no. about it being raised. Right. But additional cost. And now, yeah. is there also because in the in the the master plan for that, they also have there's also the plan about adding sidewalks on the park side. Yes, that's. Or is that going to be? Well, okay. Well, that's included. There's wow. sidewalk. Sidewalk goes right behind the telephone poles. Okay. Uh, takes a fair amount of regrading because there's some steep parts. Yeah, but yeah right, we, right. We made it, we, my, my coworker, Paul, managed to make it all okay. work. He's, he's a whiz. Right, like up near, up near Triangle, right? There's like, it's steep up there. That's where it starts to get a little complicated. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be a huge project. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, And what's the status to, I mean, go ahead, Eve. Do you have? Sorry, yeah, I had two questions, one on um, the two North Pleasant pieces, so I'll stick okay. to the Kendrick Park piece for now. Um, 
in the mean, th this all sounds fantastic, Jason. Um, in the meantime, two specific requests. I was just biking there a couple days ago. And okay. when you're biking there from the sidewalk on North Pleasant and you turn right there, you're just, you know, you got the sign full on in your face, do not enter. Um, at a very minimum, I think there should be a sign there that says accept bicycles um that could be put on there right away um preferably to have a stripe that would show the counterflow line um could could one of those be put in now um i don't think anybody's willing to sign off on that kind of liability without the full width of the road available honestly the roads in really rough shape our paint machine is away so no line so there. so even except even a sign that says except bicycles i think the sign opens the town up to a liability, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, I, I had advocated- willing to put their name on that. On I, it's it's yes so frustrating because it's more dangerous, you know, if cars aren't expecting you, right? Anyway. Yeah, Eve, I had advocated for that too, like using the model that's in Cambridge and Boston and parts of Europe and things where for sometimes with the counterflow on these, neighborhood streets that there isn't actually it's not even a signed bike lane like a marked bike lane it's just considered to be like a low flow street and then the cyclists can go where they feel comfortable but i mean as jason was saying the dpw wasn't willing to do that but yeah I mean, but, I, of, but i had advocated for that so. but part of the problem in amherst is just that there's there's so few signs saying where bikes can and can't go that no one expects them and none of the bicyclists follow the rules because they assume that like they're either allowed to go where there it doesn't say, you know, like, like I think Amherst needs to move towards a future in which they're actually spelled out where your bikes are supposed to go and they go there and they don't go other places and that would entail having signs like that. Yeah. But well, I guess, but what Jason was describing, right, is that in the, the project in the spring, they will add the counterflow bike lane and then they would have such signage, so. Everything will be included once the road's wide enough. Okay. Once it, you know, right. okay. it's a smooth, safe surface. Right now, I would I honestly think it's kind of dangerous to, um, to ride a bike down either side of that street is not fun just, to, just because of the condition of the pavement. And now have you seen, do you still have, see issues with people going the wrong way or not no, so much? Anymore? I don't. Has that been addressed? That is okay. not a problem any longer. Good. Yay. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, you know, I do the, I, I ride there many times a day. So in both directions, Eve, although I don't feel safe riding the other way, but you know, I navigate around people. So I have whatever. one just fear of the back end parking com combined with the counter flow bike lane is that oh, yeah. we don't have That's enough perfect. room for the person it's not a super wide road so the person backing into a parking spot their front end has to swing into the counter flow bike lane when oh. you're backing into a parking spot you're not looking in front of you right. that's my one big fear with the counter flow bike path and i'm gonna let it lie i don't see it as something that's gonna occur a lot I just have that one tiny fear in the back of my head that it might happen. But I think a cyclist is cyclists are, you know, I, I bike all over too. I'm not like a hardcore cyclist, but I bike all over town. I, I, and, and cyclists are more aware than the drivers sometimes. And if yeah. I was biking down the road and saw a driver with their head over their shoulder pointed backwards, you'd pause before you try to hammer through and drive by them. Yeah, I, 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 sign I you totally could put agree. on there to warn bicyclists to watch for backing up drivers or something. Yeah. And but, and yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be a concern as well on um the main section of North Pleasant Street with the right the quote temporary yes. back in parking? Because there's a lot of well, much higher flow of bicyclists the, there. Well, you're looking behind you and the cyclist is coming from behind you though. Yeah. You're not swinging oh, into the lane, which is out of your view. Yeah. No, yeah. I hear you, but okay. But that's my it's a tiny fear, and I think I've talked yeah. myself out of it finally, but it was like when it first got brought up, I was like, What? Oh my god, we need to widen. I know we can't widen anymore. We're already maxed out. We're pushed up against the property line on one side and the telephone poles on the other side. So. Right. And the but I thought we were, were I weren't aren't we getting rid of the green space on the 
That was the yes. discussion. Yeah. Best yeah, that's size. what I meant. That's what I in our in our okay. proposed plan, we've maxed out, we've we've, we've okay. pushed everything yeah. as far as we can in the proposed plan, not existing conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now what's the status with Pomeroy? Pomeroy and West Street. Pomeroy and West Street, the roundabouts under construction. It's it's hard to see. All we're doing is underground drainage right now. Um, so all the drainage has been going in. They've been working for the last two weeks installing some of the drainage that is to accommodate the future roundabout there. We're hoping to have them get as much stuff in the ground until the weather goes really far north, I guess. It doesn't go south when it goes cold. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna let them do as much as possible. That allows all the buried stuff to get as much settlement as possible before they come in and do all the surficial uh, improvements, the granite and the paving and everything else. You know, it's horrible to have a trench settle after you've finished a brand new paving job and you, and you can visibly see a, a construction trench that settled a year later. So we're hoping to get that in, let it all settle and let, let everything uh, be ready for the spring. So yeah, Caracas has started that. They're, they're working right along. They ordered all the granite for that has a really long lead time that should be here next year. And then they should be able to get started on the rest of the work. Okay. Right. And then, um, okay. Um, and, and East yeah. Pleasant Street. So what's the status with them? Um, so there was a sidewalk surveying that was done. Yeah. Wait, we, I wanted to ask about the North Pleasant before oh. you go on. Okay. Oh, go sure. ahead. Eve. So um, a long time ago, back when I was on the TAC, I had asked Gil for, Gil, one of the things that I thought was just a really bad idea is to have the multi-purpose lane switch. And especially oh. just because watching the students, they all walk on the west side because that's where most of the housing is. Yeah. Um, and so my thought was, you know, that's really where the attention needs to go is on the west side. Um, and Gilbert said, no, you just can't do it, you know, because of the, where the curbs are and where the light poles are. And I asked him to just get a cost estimate. Like what, what would it actually take to do and how much more money would it cost to get the multi-use lane on one side of that street? And I'm just wondering if you, you know, and, and one of the things he said was, you know, we'd have to move the light poles. And I said, well, let's just put it in. The next time the light poles go in, they're going to get put in a place where that would make that possible. He said, oh, we can't do that. So I'm just curious to follow up on that, whether that kind of like just even a very rough cost estimate of how much more that would cost than the way it's planned out would be. So we've we've come up with a, a rough, you know, it's, it's a small ballpark figure, but it's close to $10,000 per utility to relocate when you ask them to relocate it to the other side of the street, they really freak out. Um, the utility guys, they like their straight lines, everything in a straight line. Otherwise, you need all the guy wires tying things back and pulling the tension. So you know how North Pleasant does a nice meandering curve for the full length. So that's why the utility poles like start off on one side, then they kind of make the leap across when the road curves. So it it, uh, it gets really expensive to move poles because um, you're moving, not only are you moving that one pole, you're moving the four utilities hanging from the pole and then anything that goes down the pole and underground also yeah. has to be moved. So it's it's not a joke that it, it, it does, it does come out to quote to 10 grand per pole. And so and, if you're um, looking at a long stretch like that, you're talking about 40 to 50 poles. So, but like we just had a whole bunch of poles put in new on East Pleasant and in my neighborhood, like, and I know that happens like once every 50 years, but it seems like that's been happening. Like, what if, you know, is there even the option to say, okay, next time that happens, we're going to do it in this different place. Is that even an option? No, because they just came at us with that weird pole replacement thing this year. And they were like, I don't know. They had all their poles assessed last year. I don't know if you saw the survey crews going around with flipboards, looking up at the poles and counting number of wires and stuff. But so they did all that last year. And then this year was their year. Like these ones are critical. They have to go They're they, they basically called them. They kind of called it an emergency, not or a, a high priority, just like they did their high tension. So that is a once in a blue moon kind of opportunity. And, and it, unless we were doing a project, it didn't happen. We managed to sneak. We managed to get poles where we wanted them on the uh, Pomeroy Village project because because they had those slated for replacement. So we were like, okay, 
get them out of our roundabout. And they, they did accommodate us in that aspect, but everything else is kind of, uh, even, I even showed them plans for our future Route 9 Belchertown Road project and they couldn't accommodate anything extra there. They just, they kind of just had to put the poles as close to the existing pole as they could because they have to coordinate with the other three utility companies once they move, once Eversource moves their stuff, they have to, you know, coordinate with Verizon, Comcast, uh, and a fiber company at least to move everything else. So it's, it's very complicated and it's, there's a ton of red tape. We've, We've moved poles on paving projects three years ago and the existing pole is still in the way and the Verizon and the Comcast is still hanging on the old pole while the Eversource is moved well away and, and you can go to the bottom of that pole and there's five rear view mirrors laying at the base of it that have been from clipped off of uh, moving vehicles. So the poles are difficult. Yeah, it seems like something that would be useful to like at least think about in the future. I mean, if it can't be done on North Pleasant, like um, where is it? Um, Main Street, you know, that one is mm -hmm. just so difficult yeah. without some movement of the poles yeah. to do something. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks for that explanation. That's helpful. Well, and wait, I, I noticed too, I mean, I know it's a state project, but the... Um on Northampton Road, right? Where yeah. they've been laying out the sidewalk on the south side. Yeah. That they, that the light poles are remaining in between like the road and the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that gives them their, like... their target three foot grass belt. That will oh. never grow, that so will the never grass grow belt grass. will be where the poles are. Is that right then? Yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um. All right, so what were the other? Oh, we were going to talk about East Pleasant. Yeah, and East Pleasant. Yeah, East Pleasant. I haven't touched. We do have the survey, which is great. We finally okay. have all the all the all the boundary the property lines. There are the right of ways. Well, it varies. At Olympia Drive, it's not a hundred feet, but after you pass Eastman Lane, it's it increases to about a hundred foot right of way, which is insane. Wow. There yeah. are there are houses that practically touch the the, the their property line. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's driveways that are almost entirely within the existing right of way there. And we now, and, and the road is nowhere near centered in the right of way. It's the, it meanders the whole length of the way, which makes all projects a little more difficult, but, but still doable. We know, we know we have the space. We just have to figure out what we want, where we want it. You know, if it's two sidewalks, if it's a multi-use path on one side or, you know, whatever it is, we just kind of have to pick our pick our target you know come up with some concepts and push forward um yeah so i was i was curious what the next step was and i was part of the um east pleasant folks because i live right near there um who went out and interviewed homeowners and basically yeah. the consensus of the neighborhood was you do need something on both sides because right. that basically because that street is not safe to cross for like kids and and yeah. part of the idea is there's there are tons of people in, in the neighborhoods on each side and to yeah. make it so people can travel up and down you, you kind of need something on both sides and then if we want to be um promoting like young cyclists children cyclists or you know we talked to um someone who um whose whose husband uh uses a walker and he can't walk anywhere you know yeah. so if we want to um make these you know spaces safe for all kinds of people to use for all kinds of purposes where what we had come up with, and I'm not talking about the tack, I'm talking about the neighborhood folks, was you need at least a six foot sidewalk on on both sides of the street, because mm -hmm. um, otherwise you're stuck sending these vulnerable people across that a pretty dangerous street potentially. There's no good, I mean, in somewhere you're going to have to make a crosswalk with some kind of, you know, indentation to make that it, it's safe enough to cross. But right now, if you just yeah. painted a crosswalk on there, no one would stop. Yeah, no. No. Jason, when you said um, that you guys will develop some concepts and then move forward from there, um, what does that look like? Is that just sort of an internal conversation within DPW, maybe iterative with the planning department, or is that something that actually goes to the public, either you know through the TSO or through us, um, in terms of um, taking a look at the concepts? We start out with the real broad brushstrokes. You know, 
what's possible, what's not possible, what are the, you know, what are the really prime street trees that are no, you know, that's a non-starter. This tree can't go. That's kind of how we start out. We we slap some lines on a on a really rough plan and we mm -hmm. say, okay, here's the obstacles, here's the challenges, right. here, you know, we just kind of really broadly sit down with a really broad brush stroke plan. And then we sort of start start sort of um, refining it as we go there. And we do, a lot of that does take place in house, but we leave a lot of the options and we get, we try to get the options to a presentable state where they're not like just, you know, what we start with is pretty ugly. And then what we, what we get like to conceptual phase, we know where the, we know roughly where the crosswalks are gonna be. We know what light poles may or may not need to move. We know what shade trees, are either going to have to go or the sidewalk project doesn't go so we could try to get it to that point and like figure out what's acceptable you know you get to the north Amherst cemetery there and you know you gotta be really careful you gotta tread real carefully right. street <laughs> trees historic fences that sort of stuff right, right. Uh, everywhere else we've got a fair amount of room to play um the other constriction on that whole stretch is the wetland crossing at uh, between Eastman and Olympia. Um, so that that probably is only going to be a one-sided sidewalk on that stretch. So we got to figure out what the easy side is. And if we're doing a bridge or if we're filling in, you know, filling in wetlands is probably a no-go. Um, so mm -hmm. we're going to have to figure out what do we, we, we do have a bridge down at wastewater that may or may not have been obtained for this purpose. Um, so then figuring out which side it goes on, how well we can engineer this and, and how well we can permit it. Um, so that's a big consideration. There's a couple other minor wetlands on that stretch too. There's some down by Cherry Lane um, that may oh, yeah. fill a sidewalk on that side of the road. We might be able to get sidewalk all the way to Cherry Lane and then have to cross over because that sort of does stop. That's sort of the end of the neighborhoods on that side. Um, so that's the kind of stuff we look at, you know, the really big broad picture stuff like, oh, there's a wetland, we can't fill it in, we don't have the room to replicate if we do fill it in. Um, and you can't just fill in wetlands, like, you know, without any, without compensating or without recreating twice the wetlands you, you take away. So all those sort of considerations go into our big conceptual stuff and then we kind of come back with, okay, this is what we can do. And if there's, you know, if there's strong pushback, no, we want a sidewalk all the way to the cemetery, then we try to figure out how to make that work. Maybe it bumps into the bike lane. Maybe it's right up against the road and, and it, it splits around telephone poles and sort of silly stuff like that, that aren't, it's not our ideal solution, but it's a solution. So that's kind of, I don't know. In that, in that scenario, where would the pushback come from if this is all an internal conversation? Oh. What? Uh, we, oh, so then you go and you you show well, it to the counselors, yeah. or I, I well, just yeah. Well, sometimes we'll start. Sometimes we'll start meeting internally with the conservation department. You know, if it's if a if it's a wetland issue, see. we start meeting with them and we say, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we do got this. it. Understood. We, you know, we've got a we don't have enough right of way to recreate wetlands anywhere, so that's that's usually a non-starter. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out what what our best options are there. So a lot of times it'll. It'll start in-house DPW in-house, then it might branch out a little further to town manager planning, conservation, that sort of, you know, that sort of second look at it. And at that point, we'll, we'll sort of narrow down like, okay, here's three concepts. Okay. And a lot of, then, then we'll take the three concepts and kind of go public. And you guys are typically one of those first stops. Oh, that's on, great. On so, 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 Jason, where do you think? I mean, I know when Guilford was last with the TAC, and um, that he was saying that the work plan is already like being built out pretty much for the 2023 season and a good part of 2024. And I mean, a project mm -hmm. like East Pleasant Street, like extending the sidewalks, like what sort of rough time frame would you see for having improvements there? Like, I know. So I know the town's good. involved with a lot of other projects right now. Yeah. And so the, the cool thing about East Pleasant Street is that we got the road done. And we know we have plenty of extra space. So they, and the road's in beautiful shape. The road, we did a, well, we did one of my favorite treatments on the road. It's the full depth reclaim with asphalt injection. So that road's not going anywhere for a long time. So, and then the town and the town council have been great with giving us just a little bit of extra money for sidewalks lately. 
So that's kind of allowing us to do, and, okay. and a lot of that was aimed towards existing sidewalks that are in horrible shape. And I agree with that approach because there's certainly many ones that are impassable and, and, and whatnot. So, but I mean, with the, with the town council being pro sidewalk, this could become its own little sidewalk project. Mm -hmm. um, and it could potentially just go on its own because you, you can take away all the road costs other than the crossings and you can this is designable and buildable without doing too much to the roads infrastructure okay. there's a few yeah. weird drainage scenarios but that's right. really minor work i mean it's going to get pretty ugly though i'm just looking at the town maps and some of these houses like you say are like right up on the the property line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, if we start going through people's driveways in the wrong spaces, I'm assuming there's going to be a fair amount of pushback on that sort of stuff. So that potentially pushes out the time frame, I think, to Tracy's point, right? It's not something that's going to be necessarily tomorrow. It doesn't solve I mean, everything, Marcus, but when we knock yeah. door to door, 80% of the homeowners. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at a, a few, few in particular yeah. that aren't owner occupied and you know are gonna miss <clears throat> are you gonna be missing some carports for the parking uh, and you know yeah because mm -hmm. of where we go and things like that so, so. yeah well so yeah. i know i know um, um just looking at our schedule now i know chris said she had to leave by like 6 30. yes i was gonna say coming up quickly <laughs> And so, um, well, Jason, thank you for the updates you've given us, and um, we look forward to continuing the conversation. And I know Guilford had said that he had his like list of projects that are coming up. Um, so, I feel like the town is making doing a lot of projects. Kim, I have one um, comment, and this is just toward what we were just discussing, which is the you know the town put some made some nice uh reconstructed some sidewalks particularly in our neighborhood my neighborhood but you know while I was running this weekend with the snow I was really shocked at the number of sidewalks that were impassable like and I'm a pretty adventurous runner and the sidewalks were literally impassable because because homeowners did not shovel their um sidewalks and i i was really shocked because a lot of this was on like lincoln which you know big houses you know big money mm -hmm. and people aren't doing that so i think i really feel like the town needs to state explicitly somewhere mm -hmm. like please everyone you know it's time if you have a sidewalk you're responsible for it because uh now there are all these brand new sidewalks like on McClellan and half, mm -hmm. half of it isn't plowed and they're beautiful and flat and people on all kinds of modes can use those sidewalks. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of, of people simply shoveling, mm -hmm. you can't well, use them. Yeah, so this is actually- street. It's so ridiculous. G so GOL right now, the council's uh, governance organization legislation committee has been looking because I requested at the snow and ice bylaw, um, the current bylaw that says property owners are responsible and who does enforcement. And I mean, the thing that Guilford's brought up at that meeting, there was a meeting yesterday even, is that because as a courtesy, the DPW has been plowing some of the streets, like some of the streets like Strong Street and other streets that can have a large number of pedestrians, then certain homeowners are like not doing it at all. Right. But but right. ultimately and homeowners are liable. No, and they are yeah. liable. That's, I mean the Supreme the, the state Supreme Court has said that the homeowners are liable and that you know, and the DPW doesn't always get out to do the sidewalk. So I, I mean, so last week the town put in, or earlier this week, the town put a notice on the town website to reiterate that it's the property owners that are responsible, but they really need to do more outreach than that. Because, I mean, you have to like go to the, you have to go to the town website to, you know, even see that or subscribe to the email updates or whatever. Like they need to really push and, um, you know, there, I've seen some good PSAs, like East, the city of East Hampton has one and stuff, just to really push um, how important it is that the sidewalks be clear. And that even if the town occasionally does a pass on people's sidewalks, it, the property owners are still responsible. Yeah. Right. We so. discussed this 
last year or two years ago because it's it's been annoying a lot of us um wow. but i mean what you talked about though lincoln isn't one of the ones that gets the pass right it's on the main arteries mostly some, some sections do so yeah but our, not all what our yeah. sort of policy is our general policy we do school zones so anywhere kids walk to school mm -hmm. we try to do yeah. those because the schools are town-owned properties and we have to do those anyways. So, right. And then there's another group of properties where, so we have to go all the way out to the landfill on Old Belchertown Road. There's no sense in driving a sidewalk plow all that way and not dropping the plow. So right. we do properties on the way to town properties and we do as much as we can in the school zone. Um, for major school routes, and mm -hmm. then of course, then of course, there's the down, then the downtown. And and you have in order to report people, you have to call the parking people. You right? have to actually yes. call the town. I mean, so this came up last year, yeah. and this is another thing that I asked DOL and the council to look at is that the way the bylaws is written is it says the enforcement is done by the police. So what you actually need to do, what I was told last year when I was wanted to complain, is that you need to call the police dispatch line currently. Mm -hmm. But what the GOL was talking about yesterday is expanding enforcement capabilities to the DPW. I mean, Guilford said that, you know, they have, he has staff who could help with that. Also to inspection, because I really, I think that makes a lot of sense for it to be with inspection because inspectors are out looking at other aspects of, you know, rental properties and homeowners properties and trash. And it should be in the it's all kind of a maintenance car. thing. And yeah, uh, I know. So, but to, whenever we spoke about it, it in TAC, we yeah. were told that it was parking management that you had to call. You called the town and parking management, and they are the ones police. that issued fines. It's the police but department. Now, no, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. the, the information has changed since then. So no, we're talking police. about how things have, I mean, for what we have been told, Jason, I'm, I understand that maybe it's always been that way, mm -hmm. but yeah. th that's just goes to point out the fact that nobody really has a single point of contact and we've actually just lost quorum and it just because... it just needs to be clear wait no kim's just left we've just lost quorum oh so nope. Nope. so well we... she might have gotten kicked off or something but anyway yeah no i understand but I'm we can saying, continue um, to have that discussion we can um talk, but you can't make a no. decision no, and GOL <laughs> is review GOL is reviewing it. So yeah, I no, appreciate that. Fact, I mean, sure. I, I found in my archives like an email, a letter I had written to the town like 20 years ago saying how about like clearing the sidewalks. I mean, you could write the same letter today about the same issues. And so well, I, it, it, the it, current it, bylaw like, is not it, that yeah. effective in no. terms of the enforcement. So and it's like, well, so Pine Street, you guys come up and down Pine Street every once in a while with the okay. sidewalk plow. But then you're also going up and down it with the main plow and the sidewalk is right next to the road. So depending on which one goes first, first it, you know, it's just it's going to mess it up. Right, and right. then that's where it comes into the yeah. homeowners to actually go out and sort it out. But they don't well, think they need but to that, because I mean, the plow's gone out. But that's it. where you really I mean, maybe we can even ask like to go in the water and sewer bill or something like just to really reiterate that. Yeah, the owners are responsible. Get together, get so, the, get the, um, uh, yeah, yeah. all right. Well, since we don't have quorum, I guess we'll end there. But um, I did want to just mention that I've been in touch with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and um, their transportation planners did want to come to our next meeting and talk about the regional long range transportation plan, and they also um, Mass DOT wants to present the statewide plan. Um, oh, cool. So I wanted to um, just make sure that they lined up Mass DOT person to come and, um, oh, Kim says she can't get back in. So, because oh. um, sometimes I think if somebody accidentally got kicked out, you know, it doesn't let them back in. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can so invite her or not. I'll just, we can just end, I think. But um, mm -hmm. so just if people think that they're available January 3rd, I guess I'll send around an email to you just to confirm. Yeah, I but I, but I'll they've be. already oh. lined up the state person to come. So I just wanted to, to be like, okay, we'll do it January 3rd. Also, by that time, we should have two new TAC members because it's going to TSO for approval tonight. And then the council will hopefully approve it too. And I, I, uh, I was very persistent with Paul in trying to get this through. So I'm excited to have our new members, including uh, Tate Coleman, who you've met before, who's 
the grad student at UMass doing transit work. So thanks, Tracy. You know, I got, I got, I got, thank you guys. Oh, All right. Right. him on the phone if you guys want oh. to say anything else. So just, just we'll just tell Kim we wrapped up and yeah, she can hear right. you next time. And thank you, Jason, for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. All right, thanks. take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, that's encouraging that they.